This is the Garmin Glow 2. This device is Garmin's take at a Bluetooth GPS receiver. This video will only touch on the land and marine uses of this device, not the aviation side. Before we dig deep into what the Garmin Glow is, let's immediately put the Glow head to head with the Google Pixel 5, with full force GNS options enabled, and a Garmin InReach Mini. For a comparison, we're gonna use this InReach Mini. It's gonna be on one second tracking. Furthermore, we're gonna be using a Google Pixel 5 with the developer options on, which includes full force GNSS, which tracks all GNSS constellations and frequencies with no duty cycling. That's gonna be on. The phone is just gonna be down here like any phone would normally be if you were driving in a car. These two devices are gonna be closer to the windshield. If you have a Garmin Glow 2, you're probably gonna keep it up on your dash. That's the whole reason it has a battery built in and is to be able to connect to any of your devices like a tablet or smartphone without these devices being up by the windshield. So when you have a Garmin Glow, there are a few apps that you'll need to download. These are for Android. You'll need to download the first app called Bluetooth GPS. This will connect your Garmin Glow to the device that you want to use, so a phone or a tablet. Then you'll also need GPS Logger. This is the Bluetooth GPS app. You'll need to pair your Garmin Glow to your device. After that, you'll see Garmin Glow up here. And then you'll need to check Enable Mock GPS Provider. You'll have to enable that actually in the settings on your phone under developer options, which is a hidden feature that you'll have to activate. Once you do, your phone will not follow its original GPS and it'll use this app as the GPS it's going to follow, which this app is connected to the Garmin Glow and you'll get all the data from there. So you click connect and then it'll start showing your position data. This is the GPS logger app. You will need to go into the settings here if you want the most collection. So under tracking, it says collection density. I have it at maximum. In GPS interval, I'm gonna have it as the shortest. These are the same settings I'm gonna use on the Pixel 5, which is just gonna use its original GPS. Okay, let's begin. Let's start tracking the Garmin Glow 2 data to this tablet here. Let's begin by clicking track points. And once you do, as you can see, it's already tracking a ridiculous amount of points. Let's start over here on the Pixel 5. Not connected to anything besides itself. Let's see how slow it's updating. And then the inReach is also recording. So all these GPSs did really well. There's just a few areas that I do want to point out. The first is a small bend where the Pixel 5 went off on its own. The second is a very sharp turn where the Pixel 5 did the worst. The inReach was pretty spot on and the Garmin Glow with its enormous amount of data points made an excellent and crisp path. Lastly, there was a curve on a hillside that had all the devices showing their location on the guardrail. Some of it could have been imagery error from Google Earth, but the glow out of all three devices did the best. Now, let's dig into what the Garmin Glow is, why it's still worth it, and some hopes for future Garmin Bluetooth devices. The Garmin Glow is short for GLONASS, which is the Russian Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS. GLONASS significantly helped improve accuracy in receivers working alongside the American GPS system. Around 2013, Garmin was slowly updating their product lineup to include the GLONASS signals in their devices. According to Garmin, the GLOW connects to up to 24 more satellites than devices that rely on GPS alone. This allows the GLOW to lock onto satellites approximately 20% faster and remain connected at high speeds. The GLOW updates its position information at 10 times per second, that's up to 10 times more often than GPS receivers in many mobile devices. The Garmin GLOW has been around since 2013. Garmin released the Garmin GLOW 2 in late 2018 with only a 1 hour improvement to the battery life from 12 hours to 13 hours, so they are essentially identical devices. The Garmin Glow 2 costs $99 today. I went through two of these. The original died on me a few years ago, and now I have the Glow 2 with the belt clip that works great for clipping onto a brim of a hat. Common uses for this receiver are if you do not want to have your phone or tablet mounted near your vehicle's windshield, or if your device is concealed in a backpack or pocket without a clear view of the sky. Just put the Glow on your dashboard or back window and it just works. 
Maybe there's terrible weather, deep canyons, or skyscrapers in your area, and a strong signal is hard to come by with your tablet or phone. Or maybe you're a hiker and you want to clip this device onto a backpack or hat and always be collecting accurate trail data for use with navigation apps such as All Trails or Gaia GPS. Maybe you have a professional application to use the Glow for. You can collect data points for geographic information systems via data collection apps such as Esri and Trimble. The GLOW works great when you need data precision down to around 3 meters. Local governments or nonprofits could use the GLOW for inventorying potholes, storm drains, urban trees, and mapping new mountain bike trails. For $99, it's pretty decent. On the extreme end of Bluetooth receivers is the $2,500 Trimble R1 GNSS Bluetooth receiver. The Trimble is legit and claims to give sub-meter accuracy. It's a professional device that's rugged with multiple connectivity features and access to multi-GNS including GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and two more satellite systems. This is the exact device that Garmin needs to make. They can make a professional version and a consumer one as an update to the GLOW. I would love to see Garmin update the Garmin GLOW with their multi-GNSS receiver that they are recently putting in their outdoor handhelds like the GPS Map 66SR and 65S. If Garmin got into the professional surveying industry that tailored more to GIS data collection, they could reasonably compete with Trimble. Garmin clearly has the tech and ability to make high precision instruments for aviation, marine, and autonomous driving, so they could make GIS data collection receivers. Local governments and nonprofits are looking for a reasonable way to collect GIS data. On the prosumer side, you could call it, Garmin did acquire Delorum for the in-reach devices and now acquired the Geos Dispatching Center for control of the SOS feature. A professional device would fit well with search and rescue groups and major expeditions if they work out connection issues with the Iridium signal and a GNSS receiver matched into one unit. Garmin does have a professional in-reach plan, but it only allows you to add more than one user on an account. The GLOW 2 is an inexpensive Bluetooth GPS receiver specific for someone who still wants to use their personal devices and not lug around a Garmin handheld. Hopefully this explained the Garmin GLOW 2 to you, and I'll keep my fingers crossed for an updated Bluetooth GPS receiver from Garmin.